Tiger Woods becomes a high-profile example of the growing problem in the U.S., which is drugged and driving. Recent data shows drugs are involved in more fatal accidents than alcohol alone. So what do you need to know about your medications and how they might affect you on the road? Dr. Mehmet Oz is with us now. Doc, good to see you. So no alcohol involved in this. It was zero, zero, zero on the scale, but he admits that he was taking Vicodin. Let's just start there. How powerful a drug is that? Hugely powerful. It's an opiate, and it turns out the raw material in Vicodin, something called hydrocodone. If you actually look at other medications, it's frequently found. Number one most prescribed product in America now, more than thyroid medications. And I just checked before we kept one on the air, 800 other major drugs that it interacts with. 800. So you can be taking Vicodin, thinking you've got a lower back pain problem. The doctor prescribed it for you because that's what we often prescribe. It's not as regulated historically as other opiates. And you might take an over-the-counter medication supplement. You didn't even think it was going to be an issue. And next thing you know, you're found asleep on the side of the road. And that, would that be typical? I mean, is that the kind of interaction you might fear if you mix this hydrocodone, Vicodin, with something else mm -hmm. unexpected? Uh it's one of the most common problems we would fear. That's why you often will see warning labels on medications saying don't operate heavy machinery, which includes cars, obviously. But the problem with opiates is they numb you and they dull you, so you're not aware of what's going on. That's why they work for pain. They don't actually take away the pain itself. They dull your response to that pain. So imagine taking a medication for, again, a very innocuous reason, and then taking another sedating medication. For example, antidepressants could be in that category. There are other drugs you might not think of as being able to interact, but they will. And because of that, uh, you'll end up with symptoms that are unpredictable. All right, Dr. Raj, real quick, could you just walk us through some of these drugs and what their effects could be? Sure, I made a quick list and there's a graphic we'll put up now. Remember, everyone reacts differently, so you have to observe yourself. Antidepressants will mimic being drunk if they're of the depressing quality. And as there are some antidepressants that actually do that, they sedate you a little bit. Valium, 10 milligrams, in the pretty typical dose, will give you a blood alcohol level equivalent of 0.1%, which means you're drunk. So you're effectively driving drunk. Antihistamines slow your reaction time and they hurt your coordination, both problematic when you're operating a car. Decongestants, pretty innocuous. They can actually cause drowsiness. And sleeping pills, and let me leave you with this. This is a big problem because the sleeping pill medication will still be in your blood when you wake up if it's a sustained release. And that's why many folks are very uncomfortable. And I'll give you my rule of thumb, I tell my family, the day after you take a new drug that might have a side effect like this, do not drive, don't do anything mm. big time. Once you get used to using a medication, if you're chronically on it, then you can adjust your reaction time uh, and you can gauge how dangerous it might be for you. Mm. But in England, they tell you five days after taking narcotics, for five days, don't drive a car. Wow. That's wow. how dangerous these things can be. Uh -huh. All right. right. Dr. Oz, Doc, mm. useful information. Thank you so much. Good reminder. Thank mm -hmm. you. Hello, Today fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.